would seem likely that there's not a single cause for a unique event like that, but we don't know. It was a unique event in Earth history. And there have been a number of hypotheses that have been put forward, and the hypotheses are good ones, and they include a real diversity of ideas. For example, that there was a genetic revolution that took place. The genetic revolution of the Cambrian period could never have occurred without Earth's first primitive animals, the sponges. They had existed for millions of years, establishing the way cells interact to build an animal. This first step was a vital one for the creation of all the animals that followed. Sponges invented cell types, and sponges invented the ability of cells to collaborate. Sponges learned how to become multicellular, how, how to produce different kinds of cells and, and the ability for those cells to talk to each other. Sponges really don't have tissues, and sponges don't have the ability to move and to do the kinds of things we associate with animals. Building on the cellular framework established by sponges, flower-like cnidarians were the first animals to develop the revolutionary ability to move. They invented tissues, they invented a mouth, they invented nerves, they invented muscles, they invented the ability to move, to do all the things that we think of as animal things. Finally, life began to evolve in dramatic new ways with the appearance of flatworm-like animals. This was the first creature to embody the genetic blueprint of a hunter, complete with a head and a primitive brain set near sensory organs. Once this basic blueprint became established, innumerable variations followed. But reaching a critical threshold of genetic complexity was only part of what triggered the Cambrian explosion. Another idea was that animals were evolving, they were small, but something changed ecologically, perhaps the oxygen levels arose. And the result of that was that animals could become larger. The third possibility for why the Cambrian explosion happened is that it was an arms race, that some animals learned to become predators. They began to eat other animals. And as soon as that happened, of course, now the arms race begins because there's an advantage to avoid being eaten and there's an advantage to eating. So an arms race begins, an arms race that hasn't ended yet in, in the animal kingdom. This is still driving evolution even now. And I, I think it's likely, in fact, that all of these uh, explanations probably reflect some part of that truth of, of what happened to make the Cambrian explosion. What may be most astounding about the Cambrian explosion's fossil record is what we can see mirrored in it. Today, almost every creature on Earth can be traced back to the animals that left these imprints. Even though the species that appeared during the Cambrian explosion are extinct, some animals today bear an uncanny resemblance to them. This was Ashea, a carnivorous worm that first appeared over 500 million years ago. It's almost a double for the modern-day velvet worm, a predatory animal found in damp leaf litter and moist undergrowth of the Australian forests. this animal be the direct descendant of an Ashea that lived half a billion years ago? Other creatures also seem to have sprung straight from the past. One group of Cambrian fossils looks strikingly like modern comb jellies. Comb jellies and their Cambrian ancestors share a trait unique in all the animal kingdom, living paddles. Made of short strands called cilia, they propel the comb jellies gracefully through the water, turning movement into a breathtaking light show.
course, nothing remotely resembling an elephant existed 500 million years ago. But the basic blueprints for these magnificent creatures were also being sketched back then. The elephant's basic design, its muscle segments, skeleton, brain and spinal cord, were represented in the tiny Pykeia. It's hard to imagine a creature any more different from an elephant. Pykeia swam the oceans and measured only a few inches. But this ancient body plan would be passed down to fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Even elephants would descend from this ancient design. One of the amazing things about the animal kingdom, right from the Cambrian on, is that there's only about 35 body plans, basic designs, yet there are millions of species. Millions of species today, millions of species at any slice of time in the past. And they represent everything, everything from insects to whales, animals that live in water, animals that burrow underground, animals that live in coral reefs, animals that swim in the ocean, animals that live on the Antarctic ice. All of these species, based on these 35 body plants. It was as if nature somehow struck upon life's essential designs in a single evolutionary leap. Every new shape of life that followed has been a variation on one of these themes. New body plans were only the beginning. As animals grew bigger and more complex, they ushered elaborate new behaviors onto the stage of life. From fierce territorial battles, to life and death struggles, epic migrations, even cooperation. Behaviors we take for granted today all took root in the Cambrian. The Cambrian legacy means that every animal on Earth has a colorful history waiting to be brought to light. On the trail of that ancient past, scientists are investigating the lives of the familiar as well as the mysterious and the wondrous. They're discovering that some of the most dramatic stories belong to the unassuming and benign creatures that emerged from the Cambrian explosion only to become unlikely heroes. Among them is an unappreciated group that shaped the destiny of the planet itself. <laughs> 